Schokolade. Now then, redarmy.tv back on your screens. Still no smile on the face, unfortunately. Uh, with me in the studio, it does make me smile. Um, a lad I've actually sat next to a few times, and he's a bit of a cheeky lad. Uh, a Teesside University course, good to meet you there. Russ Holmes, welcome to the programme, big Borough fan. Thanks for having us today. And uh, Laurie Cox joining us oh, as well. Fellow you. journo, it's great to have a journo. And congratulations, you probably don't know this, but you're the first female guest on that settee, so great to have you with us. Thank you. Uh, unfortunately, we can't keep smiling because uh, let's have a look at the the disaster that was Watford. Uh, one nil, Russ. A game we had to win, was it? I think if we looked at the fixtures, we'd have expected at least a point. A win would have been desirable, definitely. Mm. How much of a how much of a kick in the um, in 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 that area that we can't discuss on television was it, Laurie? Um, I think it was a bit, yeah, but. To be honest, you're going to get those days in the Premier League because it's a completely different league from the Championship and they've had the added year as well to get used to it. They stayed up and they got their experience and they've got Troy Deeney as well. And mm. Although he didn't score at the weekend, he's a very, very good player, very clever. As we know, how many goals have you scored against us now? Exactly. Yeah, um, but are these the games though that we need to be looking at to, to be securing the points because we, we wouldn't expect even at the Riverside to be turning over Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, Man U, Man City. So Watfords and, and Palaces and, and teams like that, that's where we need to be raking them in, don't we? I think so, yes, but then you look in the other sense as well. What Borough have always done is against the higher oppositions where people almost write them off before the game, that's where they'll go in and they'll get something. And I think they're finding it a little bit difficult at the moment to play against teams in and around them because they're too similar, so they sort of cancel each other out a little bit. Whereas when you're playing your Man Uniteds and your Arsenals and Liverpools and such like, then they raise the game and they go for it a bit more. I, I get what you're saying because it wasn't that many years ago, was it? We went to Norwich and, and, and did them at Norwich 1-0 and, <coughs> and stuff like that. And obviously Norwich went up that season. Uh, but looking back at the Watford game, where did it go wrong for us? We had, a, I think the stats said we had 60, 65% of the possession um, and I just don't think we really knew what to do with a team who could set themselves up that well and we, we tried getting the ball wide, we tried to attack them down there and, and get the ball in and it just feels like we've got the wrong formation we, we, or we haven't got the pace to be able to play that game at that level. Um, so I think there's a mixture of tactics and a mixture of individuals. I think there's, there's, there's two things we need to take a look at. We've got a lot of new players, we accept all that. Karankas, has he got the right experience? Don't know, but I'm very concerned at this moment in time that there's too much change and we don't really know where we're going. You used the F word there on the programme, formation. I know you were concerned there for a moment. Mm. Uh, formation will come into a little bit later because Ito did have a few words to say about formation after, after the event and uh, it seems to have sparked massive comment on social media so we'll talk about that a little bit later on but interestingly Laurie you, you asked that question you you did a poll didn't you on I did. formation come on give us give us the goss um I put a poll up asking there was four different options I said do we need to change formation do we need to leave it do we need to change the system and the personnel or just the personnel and there was three percent said don't change anything right. and the rest was quite even mm. Seems to seems to match up what we're what we're getting on social media as well. But again, we'll we don't we don't want to burst that bubble just yet. We'll come on to that a bit later on. Uh, but from a fan's perspective, um, Russ, how disappointing is it now from what seemed to be a, a semi-positive start to the season? I, I, I think it was predictable, wasn't it? We've had a little bit of a honeymoon. Uh, we've it now come into in my eyes. It, it wasn't long enough. I agree. But what we have done is we've 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 come to a game that we should have done well in and we've really struggled and the leadership after the game doesn't seem to be able to recognise it or doesn't want to admit that there's some changes that need to be made. Lone striker up front Laurie, we, we, we went again with that, that's what Aitor prefers and that's, that's, he's, he's absolutely adamant that's what he's going to play but against Watford at home, could we have looked at changing that slightly? Um, possibly yeah but I think that 4-4-2 formation you don't often see in the Premier League anymore. A lot of teams only go with a one striker and a 10 to play often. So I think 
in terms of tactics and formations, we're just going uh, like with the rest of the Premier League. You don't often like last night Liverpool Manchester United. You don't see four four two in either of them. I think people are preferring a diamond now or make their own formations or a four four one one or the old Barcelona diamond. Give me yeah. Messi. We'll stick him up front. We'll look after him in the Riverside. Don't worry about that. Um, We'll chat more about that a little bit later on. Uh, one of our guys, uh, Joe Nicholson, he goes to all the games at the Riverside, points a camera at himself afterwards, and here he is with his match report. So another disappointing defeat for Borough when there was a real opportunity to get their first home victory of the season. They saw a lot of the ball throughout the game, but didn't really do too much with it and didn't really test the Watford goalkeeper, Jorelio Gomez, too often throughout the afternoon. The passing was quite slow in midfield and Borough didn't really offer too much going forward. In contrast, Watford were quite direct when they had the ball. They were prepared to take shots from distance. They were prepared to run at players and they did a good job of hitting Borough on the counter-attack. They took the lead on 55 minutes. Watford, a great strike from Hollibas, and uh, that was the only goal of the game. Borough, as I said, didn't offer too much going forward. They looked a bit more of a threat when Adama Traore came on. He was a bit more direct, prepared to run at players, and it was a bit disappointing to see Jordan Rhodes only get three minutes on the pitch. I'd have liked to see him come on a little bit sooner. But Borough, very poor going forward. Um, the passing was quite slow. Looked quite disjointed in midfield. Darun and uh, Forshaw did a good job of winning the ball, but when they got it, there wasn't too many players in front of them that were prepared to take people on and really have a go. So, a disappointing defeat. I think leaves Borough 17th in the table um, with a big game away at Arsenal coming up next week. So, your thoughts then uh, on the back of the 1 0 defeat at the hands of Watford? Please, please let's see some better results coming soon. Um, not a good day then for the fans, um, but it was a good day for one particular fan. Young Finlay Ingalls, I'm so pleased to say we've got Cara, mum of Finlay, in the studio here. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. A special me. day for him because he handed the ball to the referee. He what did, did, what yes. did he make of that? He absolutely loved it. Every moment of it, he loved it. Big smile on his face? He, uh, wasn't too happy with the referee, he didn't want to shake his hand. Good lad. No, he's been brought up <laughs> right then. Um, but, uh, but he enjoyed his time down on the pitch, handing the ball over, that sort he of did, stuff. He did, yeah. yeah. For those who don't know, uh, young Finlay um, is not well. Uh, Cara, can you explain, what, what is his condition? Uh, Finley has a really rare brain tumour, um, which is known as a hypothalamic hamatoma. It's extremely rare um, and he is struggling at the moment. We were trying to raise £200,000 to get him over to America mm. for treatment. We've got the uh, we've got the funding page which we'll put up now. You're about what? You're just short of ninety thousand. About eighty nine thousand. Yep, just hit eighty nine thousand. Still yeah. climbing. How long have you been trying to raise the money? Uh, four months right. so far. And and what sort of time scale have you given yourself to try and reach that that target? We really need to have reached it by December Christmas time. Okay. Um, Finley really does need this treatment as soon it, as possible. Why America? Why does he need to? Why why can't it happen here? Uh, there's no um, operation in the UK. They can't perform it in the UK. The um, world's leading experts are all in America. Mm -hmm. So for him to have this treatment that all the consultants agree he needs, we need to travel to America. And you've had some fantastic support, haven't you, from, from other clubs as well? Oh, yes. And fans. And, yeah. <laughs> from everybody in general, really. Everyone's take, really taken his story to heart. Yeah. Um, he is a, a five-year-old little boy at the end of the day, and, and everyone's jumped on board to help us. Yeah, we're showing some pictures as well while we're talking of, uh, of Finlay. Uh, how can we help, I suppose, is the big question. Yeah, the, the main thing we really need is everyone to dig deep. Um, every single penny really will help Finley. Like I said, we need to raise £200,000, which is an extortionate amount of money. But everyone's support, everyone's help, the smallest amount will help him get on that plane and get the treatment. I've been to America, I've lived in America, I worked there for four years and um, it is expensive, the medical side of things over there, that's why it is such a big amount you're trying yes, to raise. Yes, and it's, it's pioneering as well, this, this treatment, um, it's only been around a few years, it's got fantastic results um, and, and obviously that's where we need to go, that's what he needs, how's so that's he, what we're doing. How's he coping? Um, it's an uphill battle for him, you know, every day is a struggle, um, his seizures of ten or more a day sometimes, which leave him totally exhausted. Mm. Can't, he can't do the things a normal five-year-old would do or he would like to do, which is hard as a parent to sit and watch, to sit and watch him, him struggle and to go through that. So if there's people watching this, the programme, how can they donate? What do, what do they need to, where do they need to go to? They can follow us on Facebook. Uh, it's Let's Get Finley to America. And we have a GoFundMe page also, which is um, 
www.gofundme.com Finley's Medical Fund. You can click on there, read his full story, see some pictures of him, um, and and just help really help him get on that plane. Well, thanks for joining us. Thank you very Give much for having me. Give him an extra hug from all of us. I will and, do. Thank uh, you. We'll certainly we'll try and play our part in getting the message out and and helping you reach that target. And fingers crossed for December that two hundred grand is reached. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Thank you. Okay, poll time. Are we already in a relegation scrap? Eighty nine percent, almost ninety percent of those who took part said yes. We're involved in a scrap. Uh, one man who maybe I don't know helped or didn't help as far as Borough were concerned. The referee, Roger East. I've heard a lot of people now renaming Roger East going south. Uh, pen two contentious penalty decisions, or were they? Uh, certainly Barragan should have been sent off as, as far as I'm concerned, and I am a referee. Uh, but the referee handcuffed himself by giving him the cheap yellow card early doors. Do you think it had an influence on the, the outcome of the game, Laurie? No, I don't think so. I actually don't think he did that much wrong, to be honest. I thought he... He kept control quite well of the game and it seemed to flow and there wasn't that many decisions for me that caused a flow. I just think it was a frustrating afternoon all around and it's always the man in the middle you can pick on, isn't it? But I don't think it had any bearing, I thought it was all right. Did he justify the chant, Russ? Let's have a little listen to it. I mean, the fantastic work by the North Stand, congratulations, ingenuity supreme. Um, this chance that you can hear now we've got to be careful we can't play too much of it but did he deserve that the referee or to just injury? the fans needed to find somebody to, to, to pick on no I, I don't believe he did uh, it was it wasn't justified he kept the game moving quite well okay he he, he probably should have sent off uh, but I think in general he's he's come he's come there he's done a, a fair day's work and we can nitpick every game uh, but it's not the root cause of why we didn't get something out of that game. Yeah, I, I think all we can do is look to control the controllables, can't we? You can't rely on refereeing decisions or things like that. So, uh, uh, yeah, sen sensible response by the, uh, the two sitting here to, to, to my right. Uh, somebody else who is sensible is Chris Storey. Here he is with the latest news in and around redarmy.tv. We start with news of a great night out coming up for Borough fans. Jamie Pollock's top corner event is putting on an evening with Borough legend Bernie Slaven. The Slav will lift the lid on his time at the Borough, take questions and generally mingle with supporters. Plus there's pie and peas. The night is at Top Corner on Middlesbrough's Trunk Road a week on Friday, the 28th of October. Tickets are a tenner and can be purchased via Facebook or calling the venue. The National Press has a little egg on its face after getting a Borough fan mixed up with George Friend's better half. The Mail picked up a tweet from Borough fan Bev Fothers, who was critical of Ido Karanka and attached her to the hip of Borough's raiding fullback by mistake. Though the links to the story can still be found, the newspaper quickly removed the story from its website. Bev will be in the Red Army studio next week to have a giggle over the incident. And finally, it was a wet, wet, wet day on Teesside last Sunday for the visit of Watford. However, despite the weather, the secured match day parking initiative at the Navigation Pub was still well used. More hardcore is being laid this week to further improve the car park surface ahead of the visit of Bournemouth. Don't forget, if you have any borough news, you can drop it to us here. Email studio at redarmy.tv or via social media at Borough Red Army. Chris Story there with the latest news. Um, I talk Karanka, chaps and chappers. Uh, he did come out after the game and obviously in his press conference and said, look, I'm sticking by my formation and that's caused social media meltdown as far as Borough fans are concerned. Where do you stand on that, Russ? Formation he's doggedly sticking to, is that a positive or a negative? Uh, you've got to admire the guy for sticking to his guns, but I think it's going to backfire on him. I think if you're going to play that formation, you need much more pace. Uh, you need pace down the wings and you've got to get the ball in. You've got, to, you've got to get past the full backs and get the ball in. I don't think we're capable of doing that with Stuani and Downing as, as, the, as the wingers. So I think ultimately the guy left up on, on his own up front will struggle. doesn't matter who he is. I did mention social media meltdown. Uh, a lot of tweets and posts coming in. Let's try and get through them. Uh, this is from Russ, not the same man, by the way. Uh, I talk Karanka talking post-match makes me think he may just put the nail in his own coffin. Either the formation or the starting eleven need changing. Uh, Carl Smith, his tactics are rubbish. We were the same in the championship. Just to say we went up playing boring football. He's far too defensive. Uh, I'm giving him till Christmas. 
Uh, Steve Robinson, we can't keep playing with the same players in the same formation. We've tried it since the start of the season. It's not working. Something has to change. Either the formation or the personnel. Uh, where are we now? Smog on the tees. Change the formation or we'll change you, pal. Thanks for that one, Smog on the tees. Jonathan Gartland, uh, there's nothing wrong with the formation. Uh, AK is sticking with. The problem is we don't have the pace in attack to play this formation. If you have Ronaldo, Bale or Messi or Neymar, uh, either side of the forward, uh, with this pace, it's fantastic. Uh, well, just what you've been saying. Bill Stroller, it's the old adage that applies. Keep doing the same stupid things and you'll get the same stupid answer. Uh, time for Steve Gibbo to have a serious word in Aitor's ear. Uh, Michael Snaith, they're not all negative. We have tried to represent the numbers that are coming in, positive and negative. We will finish on a positive. Michael Snaith, fair play to him. If he has faith in the system, why should he change? The system works rather well for other teams in the top half of the Premier League. It suggests that it got promotion to the Championship. It's got cup wins against Premier League teams. It's OK. So there are your thoughts with your tweets and your posts. Can you understand this split between the fans? Well, it's a massive split at the moment, but can you understand that? Yeah, I understand it. I see the frustration and all football fans get frustrated. And I can see why the split in the middle. But for me, like that last tweet that you said, he's, he's sticking to it. And it does work, as I said earlier, for the teams higher up in the league. So perhaps it's just sticking with it for a, a while longer and waiting and see if it clicks properly. Isn't there a danger, though, that too many points may go adrift when we're not expecting to gather too many? Possibly, but then you think about the teams around us, they're not picking up that many points at the moment, which is quite fortunate for us. So I'm not saying that you don't go out to win every game or you don't go to the Emirates for a point, but I think with the other teams around us, Sunderland, Stoke, West Ham as well, mm. people like that, they're not getting the results they should be getting. So at the moment, there's about six of us at the bottom and it can go any which way. And we're going to go to... Arsenal, Emirates Stadium and win, aren't we? Yeah, of course. Are we going to get a draw? Yeah, <laughs> we're going to get a draw. You're confident now, aren't you? We'll come to that shortly. Um, the question of Aito, should he stay or should he go, Russ? Uh, there's been a lot of messages also firing off this week. Uh, Craig Hatton, this is a long one, bear with me. Um, it's time for a new manager, someone that wants to win games or at least to try and win games. Maybe a manager with balls, a manager who isn't afraid to make changes that will affect the game. One that plays, plays in their correct positions. Other managers come into clubs and make an immediate impact. Karanka could be in charge for 67 years and he'll still play 4-2-3-1 because that's all he knows. Where 67 years came from, I don't know. Russ Johnson, not the same Russ. Uh, this is the reason the fans are calling for him. I'm no fan of sacking managers, but when you hear a manager saying he won't be changing uh, what isn't working, then what's the point of him sticking around? Lots like that. Uh, Terry Carter, I salute Aitor for what he's done for us, but I think he's taken us as far as he can. Nigel Pearson is written down in big bold letters. But Alan Davis, on the, on the side of Aitor, why should the manager be sacked, you idiots? He just needs time to sort things out. Try thinking before you lot say anything. So uh, there is some support out there as well. Uh, <coughs> too early to start talking about changing a manager, is it, Russ? I think so, yes. I think he deserves a, a bit more time. I think he's trying to make us very difficult to beat. Um, I've got some concerns about the communication between the, the back four and the goalkeeper. Um, but if he works on that and he makes us difficult to beat, we're not getting thrashed like Hull, like Sunderland. We're not conceding lots of goals, which is a positive. But we're not scoring any goals. And we're not looking like we're going to score goals. So yes, he needs some time. But this, this is our style. This is the way we're going to play. We're sticking with it. Hopefully it's a smoke screen. Okay, let's he's got ahead. a second plan. Let's, let's look ahead and let's be positive and keep our fingers crossed that we can repeat those sort of cup successes from the past 12 months. Uh, but in the Premier League this time, you are absolutely confident that the Borough's going to go to Arsenal <laughs> and nick a point, aren't you? Why? Everyone's going against you because you're always going to do. I wouldn't say that for a moment. That's exactly what we're doing. We went there in the cup last year, I know we lost, but we gave them a decent game. We beat Man City, we beat Man United. And it was... We were a championship team at the time, and I think over the years as well, when you've gone back over the years, we've always performed against the bigger teams, and I just think it would be so boring to go there and get a draw. Eddie. Would you buy into that? Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, I think... Uh, Realist. <laughs> Wenger will watch that, and he'll go, all we need to do is make sure that they're always trying to pass the ball back to the keeper. He doesn't like the ball at his feet. 
they'll be unsettled. They'll start not communicating amongst themselves. And our two, our front two will have an absolute field day. If you look at the power stats this, this week, mm -hmm. they've got the two guys at the top. I think that could be our big wake up call when we, when we concede quite a few at the weekend. And I'm really concerned that Arsenal, are, uh, they're going to do somebody soon. Mm -hmm. I think maybe us. Callum Chambers can't play. Uh, how do you see that changing at the back? Um, I think him and Gibson are starting to get the partnership together and it's quite a good partnership, I think, as he was saying. We don't concede a lot of goals, but Ayal is more than capable and he can slot back in there. So. Point to prove as well, hasn't he? Because he was dropped for a couple of games and this is his chance to... to he got a taste against Watford and now this is his chance to start stamping his authority on that position. I think he's a very good footballer as well and he's, uh, he's, he's good going forward. He's not only a defender, he'll, he'll go forward and he'll run at people as well, which also that makes the other team, the opposition, out of shape. When they see a centre-back winning at them, they're not quite sure what to do, so they lose their shape and then you've got a bit of free reign for a few seconds to do what you want to do, so I think he's a very good replacement, yeah. So come on, it's prediction time. What are you going for? 1-1. One, 1-1, one. One, one, not 4-4? Four, four? 1-1. One, 1-1, one. One, one, you'll be happy with 1-1. One, one. Who's going to score for the Borough? Negredo. Okay, okay. Negredo to score 1-1. One, one. Russ, uh, you're fearing a, a bit of a hammering. Is that going to go into your prediction as well? Yeah, I think we'll get I think we'll get tortured. I think we'll get beat 3-0. I don't think we stand a cat and L's chance of scoring if we play with that formation. Um, and I think there's definitely this issue at the back where we're not entirely comfortable with the ball at our feet. And Walcott will be all over that. Well, thank you for your comments. Um, it would be unfair of me not to give my prediction, and for once I'm going against the Borough. Uh, I'll be happy with a 2-0 defeat. I'd be more than happy with a 1-1 draw, I tell you. I'll be drinking pints galore if we come, uh, come away with something. Russ, Laurie, thanks for coming in. Uh, absolute pleasure much. to have you in here, and uh, look forward to you coming back uh, at some other point in the rest of the season when we can talk about being in 13th spot and well clear of any relegation scrap. We keep our fingers crossed. That's it for this week. We'll catch you next week. Fingers crossed. It isn't a drubbing uh, at the mighty Emirates. See you then. Come on, boy, we can beat these Saturday. Come on, lads, believe. Come on. We are